Today I'm going to show you how to pressure can broth. And this is a really great starting point for learning how to pressure can in general. If you really wanted to, you could do this exact same thing with water just to make sure that you get the hang of it. But first, make sure to like this video if you want to see more homesteading content and subscribe to my channel. So let's dive in. I'm going to give you a little bit of a overview of my setup. In my kitchen, I have a glass top stove. And there are some people that are able to can on their glass top stove, but we recently got our glass top stove and we didn't want to risk breaking the top, which would have been too difficult to try to repair. And so I, all, I got this outdoor um, gas stove so that way I could do all of my canning outside. And I really like this Camp Chef outdoor stove. It's a dual burner, so I can do two things at once. And I kind of have my canning station set up. So I've got my water bath canner, which you would use for acidic foods like tomato sauce or jams and jellies. And then I've got my pressure canner, which you would use for things like meats or carrots or broth. And then I've got one propane tank connected to the very bottom. And it's just really nice to have this all set up and ready to go when I need it. Now, in terms of the pressure canner I use, I use the All American um, model number 921. And I picked this one after just digging through many reviews and found that this was the most seemingly tried and true pressure canner on the market. I also didn't start pressure canning until like 11 years after growing my food because I was so scared and nervous of this thing exploding. But once I read through the manual and did my own research, I learned that there's some very basic safety features that will guide you through this and it's really easy. The beauty about canning your food, whether it's water bath or pressure canned, is that you can have food shelf stable for years. I think the USDA may say two years or something like that, but there's plenty of rogue canners out there that as long as the seal is tight on your bottles, and I'll explain what that means in a minute, your food is safe. And there's ways to check to make sure the food is safe. So I would say, you know, having done all of this now, there's actually quite a lot of intuition that goes into it and recognizing what is safe, what is not, what is good and what is not. And we'll talk about all that as well. So just to give you a review here, I'm on my porch, I've got my grill here. This is the electric two burner stove top by Camp Chef. I've got my propane here, water bath canner and my pressure canner. And I've got my broth here that I'm gonna be pressure canning today. A couple things that you should know about this pressure canner. One, you want to read the manual. Even if you watch plenty of videos, still read the manual. The manual is not fun to read, but it's one of those things that even if you just read it, there's gonna be something that sticks out to you and makes sense. So just go through it, watch this video, and then read your manual. My hope is that I can make a little bit more sense out of the manual and a little bit more live relatable experience on how to use this pressure canner. So here we have the pressure gauge that we're gonna be watching. This is the release valve that we're also gonna be using. I'm gonna first start off by taking off the top. This usually comes with two racks and a weight gauge. You'll want to look and see your elevation where you live and what weight gauge you should use that's usually a very simple google search and i use 15. these are the two racks we're only going to need this one you do not want these jars to be directly on top of your canner here. That's what this is for. It's going to provide some release so it doesn't get too hot. One of the best general rules that you can take with canning to avoid any cracked jars or broken anything or 
unsealed jars is that everything has to match its temperature. So for example, there is what's called cold packing and hot packing. Cold packing is if you have cold jars going into this electric, going into this canner, nothing is hot yet, and you're putting cold water in there. Or if you are hot packing, maybe you have just ladled all this hot broth into these jars and you need to bring your canner to temperature by putting in the water first and turning on the canner so the water becomes about the same temperature as these hot jars. So you have to decide which way you're gonna go about it. I've done both and this is what I found. If I've got the time of day, I may hot pack my jars into this canner. And that will look like having my hot broth ready to go on the stovetop, ready to go into these jars, but my jars also need to be hot. And it's a great practice to sterilize these by putting them in the oven at 200 degrees to get the jars warm when you actually pour the broth inside. That would be considered hot packing. And then I would come out here, turn this on, pour some water in, and before I put these in, I would make sure that the water in there matches the temperature up here. A few things to mention about just packing your jars in general. You can see my other canning video for a visual demonstration of this for water glass canning, because or water bath canning, because it's the same. But you need to have clean, sterile, jars. So I usually just get mine in the dishwasher. If I'm hot packing, I'll put them into the, um, into the oven at 200 degrees. The lids should always be new. The rings don't have to be new. This is the lid and this is the ring. The lids should always be new. Now there are rogue canners out there. You'll hear me mention rogue canners a bunch because like they exist. And honestly, there's a bunch of rogue canning I've done myself, but for the sake of this video, you should know the right thing to do. And then as you get comfortable with it and you are safe knowing what you're doing with this, then you can make decisions however you want. But uh, the USDA says that you need to have new lids. It's also important after you have filled your jars to wipe the rims with vinegar. That is so you do not have dirty rims that dirty up the lids and then do not cause for um, the suction to take place and then you don't have a tight seal. The way that this whole canning thing works and the way that you're able to preserve food is you're sucking out the oxygen out of these jars and they're becoming truly airtight. So botulism, uh, which is a spore that can be deadly and grow a terrible mold, um, can only exist in the presence of oxygen. And that's why we're pressure canning. Personally, one of my favorite things to do is cold pack. And here's why. I have farm chores in the morning. I usually am not doing any other extracurricular activities until like the afternoon. And so whether it's making broth or filling these jars, that's usually happening in the afternoon for me. And then I don't have time to hot pack them and pressure can, or I'm just this pregnant and don't feel like dealing with it. So my favorite new method is to prepare my jars, pack them, clean the rims with vinegar, and put clean lids and rings on them and then put them in the fridge. And then the next day, or even two days later, ideally the sooner the better, I take them out and I put them in my canner. My canner doesn't have any water in it right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put them in and then I'm gonna put cold water in here. So everything is going to raise at the same temperature together. Now, when you do this part, you wanna make sure that your cans are equally spaced and I've been told before that you want an even number of cans. So that means that if you don't have an even number of cans, then you can just fill up a glass, a same size jar with water and use that as a placeholder. Now I'm gonna fill up this canner with water about three inches. This is different than water bath canning 
when you want your jars completely submerged. You just want to fill it up about three to four inches, which is almost just halfway. You can see in here that my jars are equally spaced. I've got my little tray at the bottom and about three to four inches up onto the jars. So now we're gonna put this lid on. There's an arrow and a little uh, notch right here that you're gonna line it up in. And you wanna make sure, you kind of have to put it on to the side, so the arrow is here and the notch is the side. Now I'm moving the arrow to the notch. Whenever you are tightening or loosening these bolts, you wanna do two that are adjacent to each other. So I'm gonna start with these two and I'm gonna tighten them, tighten them as much as I can. Next group of two and then the last two. If you have a hard time getting one of these over, Try loosening up the bolts and that could help. All right, everything is nice and tight. The next step is turning on my propane. And now I'm going to turn on this stove top. And I'm gonna put it on high at first. And now I wait until the next step. I'm going to wait until I hear this little release valve start shooting out water, and then we'll proceed. So this is what it sounds like when it is ready for the pressure weight. You have to be very careful of this steam because if you made decent contact with it, it will cause a severe burn. You could wear gloves if you wanna be super careful. I usually just go in real fast. I know exactly what number I'm gonna go on. And that's it. Now I have to watch this thing pretty closely for just a few minutes as the pressure is going to rise in this pressure gauge. <clears throat> for this specific uh, recipe and for my altitude, I'm going to 15 PSI. You can see it's starting to rise and I'm going to turn this down so it's still on a high heat right now that I just started it with. But once it reaches 15, I'm going to turn the heat down and it's going to pressurize. When in doubt, I always refer to my ball book of canning. This has got tons of recipes in here, but also specifically the times to pressure cook your pints and your quarts. And for this broth, I'm going to be doing the quarts for 20 minutes. All right, it's getting close to 15 PSI. And notice the jiggle here. The jiggle is a sign that you are about ready to start your timer and start the pressure cook. But I'm gonna wait just a few minutes more till it gets to right at 15. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down now to like a medium low. And I'm gonna set my timer. Now it's a really good idea when you're first getting started with this to be present for this process, to continually monitor the pressure. It can go too high and even if you've done everything perfectly and correctly, too high of pressure can crack your jars. So you wanna make sure that it stays right there where it's supposed to at 15 in case you need to adjust the heat at all. I'm gonna adjust mine just a little bit and just monitor it. One thing you should know about this pressure canner is that there's so many safety features incorporated. The chances of this thing actually exploding are really rare. I think that's always everyone's concern is that this going thing is going to explode and cause a massive accident. And well, it can, it certainly can. And there's warning labels telling you how to avoid that. It's really hard for that to happen. You need basically all of your valves just to be tight and you just need to be aware of the safety features of making sure that all the temperatures are the same and I'll show you how we finish everything up uh, to make sure that everything is safe as we complete the process. My timer is off so the very first thing I'm going to do is just turn this off 
And now I'm going to let the pressure from the pressure weight stabilize and let everything drop to zero. In the past, I've taken the pressure weight off at this point and I think it's been too much of a pressure change. But there is release coming out and I'm seeing the pressure drop. In the past, I've left the pressure weight on and it's, or I've taken the pressure weight off and it hasn't been a problem. But the last time I did this, I heard my jars crack almost immediately after I took the pressure weight off. This is off all the way. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my propane tank. And this is the perfect example of how you can be intuitive with your pressure canner to make sure that there are no accidents because it's really going to tell you exactly what to do and you just don't want anything sudden. You don't want any sudden temperature changes. You don't want any sudden pressure changes. And as long as you stick to those two general things, then you're gonna be all right. All right, there's barely any steam coming out of the pressure weight now. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it off. Just note that this is hot and there still could be steam coming out. So this is something else you wanna do with maybe a rag. I'm just gonna use my shirt sleeve and you wanna take it off quickly and put it to the side. Now we're gonna let that continue to go down to zero before we try to open it. Once the pressure is all the way down to zero, you are safe to open up your canner. You're not in a rush to open up your canner, but it is completely safe to open it. If it was a freezing cold day, I might wait until this entire unit cools down so my jars are not exposed from warm or hot inside to the cold outside but it's a warm day today and i'm really curious how it went so i'm going to go ahead and open it up remember that just like when we're tightening it in the beginning you want to loosen it up by getting two adjacent handles loose at the same time let's see how we did oh i got one cracked jar y'all well, at least you'll be able to see what happens when you get a cracked jar. I was so careful with this. I honestly don't know why this jar cracked, but alas, you can see it when it happens. If you heard that little ting, that was, <laughs> that's awesome. That means that you have a pr successful seal and that the oxygen has been completely removed and these little lids, which usually have a little bump on the top, that little bump will go inwards and tell you when it is time or when they have sealed. You could use some canning accessories, like some tongs to pull these out and put them on a rack to cool down, to finish cooling down. You do not wanna take the rings off until they have completely cooled and you usually wanna wait 24 hours before you take the rings off. But it's a good idea to take the rings off because you should be able to grab these jars by the lid without the ring and apply a good amount of pressure to that lid and that lid not pop off. That's how you know that you have got a completely safe jar. Let's show you an example. In my pantry, I'm gonna show you some jars that I have canned previously. Here's some tomato sauce with just the lid, not the ring. And it's always a good idea to check these. And of course you can label them too. But I can hold this from the lid and it's totally secure and airtight. Here's a little pint jar of some potatoes I did last year, in November actually and I'm able to pull as hard, push against that lid as hard as I can, airtight. Now in the past, I've stored all of my jars without the rings, and if I notice anything looking different, any discoloration of whatever is in the jar, 
I test the seal and lo and behold, I had a couple of jars go bad. The seal was not um, properly sealed. And so this is sort of that next part of intuition of being able to use your senses, look at what you're looking at and know if something doesn't look right or smell right and it's not properly sealed, then it's probably not safe to eat. And you didn't get a successful pressure can with that one. I hope you've enjoyed this canning video and that you've learned how to pressure can and even what mistakes can look like. Please like this video if you found it useful to you and subscribe to my channel for more homesteading content.